New York City, its budget imploded under the weight of its right to shelter and sanctuary city laws. Mayor Eric Adams is facing a crisis. NYPD cops are leaving the force at an alarming rate with more than 2,500 badges turned in so far this year. That's a lot. The city also plans to cancel the next five police academy classes, leaving our country's largest police force at its lowest levels in decades. Joining me now to talk about this more is John Lott, Jr., president of the Crime Prevention Research Center, along with retired Sergeant Mark Vassetti. He's from the Philadelphia Warrant uh, Unit. And also in studio here is special guest John Burnett, back with us as well. Thanks, everyone, for coming on. Uh, John, if there is one thing that we remember from the year of defunding the police, it's that it doesn't work. Now New York City's policies are forcing this defunding. We're seeing badges being turned in. What's this city going to look like in about a year's time? Well, I have a personal friend of 30 years. He's already set his date for June of next year to retire. He's a lieutenant, and he just got promoted last year. Mm -hmm. He said, you know what? Um, it's not worth staying on, on, on the force for an, an additional two years to get more money after retirement. He's foregoing that slight extra bump. Why? Because the morale is low. And then now you have Democrat policies, as you pointed out, John, mm -hmm. in terms of sanctuary cities, right to shelter and so forth, coming home to roost at a time in which you have migrants crossing the border, getting all of these extra benefits and things of that nature, have to take care of them based upon the law, and that's squeezing out people who are paying taxes, not getting the type of investments in education, especially post-COVID, uh, access to shelter. We have a homeless crisis. We have so many issues. You name the issue. Yeah. So many issues in New York, but yet not enough money, and, and you can't raise taxes anymore. Right. Why? Because people already are moving out of New York in record numbers. And, and once the uh, super wealthy start moving, those individuals who pay anywhere from 50 to 70 percent of all taxes, mm -hmm. once they leave, what do you have left? Mark, you, you're a retired sergeant. Uh, when something like this happens, where they to fund or they cut bad, you know, cut the number, I think it was 30,000 officers they're going to cut. What does that do to the morale of a force? Well, here in Philadelphia, we have the same problem. We have cops leaving uh, at a record number, nobody to fill them. It, it destroys the morale to a point where people probably can't even realize. We have cops here working 12, 16-hour shifts, no days off. They go home frustrated. They come to work frustrated. They're hurt. They're mentally exhausted. And anybody in law enforcement that know, that has been in this situation knows that is the most dangerous officer to have on a street. He or she is putting themselves at risk, not because they want to, because they have to. They are beaten down, and they can't go any further. It, it's, it's so frustrating to see, not only in New York, but here in Philadelphia, all across the country, I've spoken to officers that are just done, that will forego, like he just said, a few extra dollars in their pension. Some of them just flat out quit and go into another profession yeah. after giving 10, 15 years. It's disgraceful. John Lott, I want to get your take. Uh, what do you make of this situation? I mean, it's not rocket science. If you make it risky and difficult for criminals to go and commit crime, you're going to have less crime. But as far as the police being demoralized, I mean, you have things from uh, district attorneys who aren't prosecuting the people that they do arrest. You have uh, bail reform that the people that they do arrest are quickly put out on the street with no bail. I mean, you have a situation in Detroit about a month and a half ago where a man murdered three people, was released on $1,000 that he had to put up for bail, and then he murdered somebody else. So he's already facing three life sentences. I mean, what's, you're going to get, take away his fourth life? That's what's going to keep him from committing more murders when he's out there? Uh, you know, it's not, it's not very difficult to understand why police are demoralized, why you're having them leave, and why it's less risky for criminals to go and commit crimes. Uh, and, and just to follow up to that, when they make a decision like this, it doesn't take effect right away, but how fast can this make a difference, though? Is this something that it is going to take a year or two to actually feel the brunt of it? Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen pretty quickly, I think. I mean, it's already happening. But look, if you're going to want to reduce it, that's going to be very hard. You're going to have to have a lot more police than you would have had to have otherwise just to be able to go and get the conviction rate down. Now, right. what's going to happen is that 
as you have uh, more police and they arrest and convict more people, then eventually you're going to be able to go and reduce the police. But it's mm -hmm. going to have to take a big increase to begin with to get things under control. All right. And well, that's what they showed in the 1990s yeah. in New York with Giuliani. But we have to fix the no bail reform. Right. Because what's also demoralizing the police is the fact that they're doing their job at the, at the risk of their lives. But at the same time, when it goes to the DA, the DA lets them right back out. Yeah. All right. We've got to leave it there. We've got to get to commercial break. John Lott Jr., appreciate it. Mark Vassetti, appreciate it as well. John Burnett, stick around. We've got more to talk about.